Hello there, this is Dr. Smita Mera and this is episode four of Make It Happen. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between self-employed staff and employed staff uh, and how that can impact you and the way you would need to set up contracts. So we'll start with the easy one, which is the dentists. They are usually uh, well, 100% of the time that I have uh, taken on their services, note, I don't say employed, but taken on their services, um, is through the self-employed uh, method. So they are basically paid uh, a percentage of what they earn. It could be 35%, could be 45%, could be 40%. Um, in other words, just under the 50% bracket uh, of what they make gross. Of course, you then take off the uh, laboratory charges or any credit card charges or any other charges that you might have within your practice. But basically, they're paid a percentage of what they earn. Uh, this is good for many reasons. Uh, the, the biggest reason is it motivates them. I have worked in previously as an associate, funnily enough, in clinics where dentists have been salaried. And from my experience, I don't think that this is a very good way of paying dentists because it's, it sort of demotivates them uh, and it, it sort of leads to, well, I wouldn't call it supervised neglect, but certainly, you know, if they're being paid a daily rate and treatment potentially could come in or you might have emergencies that could, you know, there and then be crown prepped or filled or uh, root canals could be started the tendency will be, well, you know, why do I want a difficult life? I'm going to get paid the same daily rate, whether I patch this up with a temporary or give antibiotics or whether I do an extirpation and, you know, let's just take the path of least resistance. Obviously, that's not the case for all dentists, but it's certainly uh, there is a tendency to want to do that if you're being paid a salary. So generally, dentists are paid on a self-employed basis, as, as I've just mentioned. Then, of course, there is the hygienist uh, uh, employment. Now, hygienists are quite a grey area. In, in, in the past, they were mostly employed people. Uh, more and more, I've seen over the last few years, the tendency is turn them in, turning them into themselves into self-employed uh, individuals, which benefits them tax-wise. It's good for you as, as an employer, I guess, because it's one less taxable income you have to worry about. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the self-employed route is pretty good. The only problem with that is that from a, an employment law standpoint, they do appear to be taken on as employed staff because usually what happens is you have a set day, you have a set number of hours and you have set patients, which a dentist usually has booked in. Uh, in other words, it's under, under their referral. So a hygienist could be deemed to be working as an employed person in the, in the sense that they're being told what to do, when to do it, when to come in and the hours that they're working, unlike self-employed individuals. So uh, And they're usually paid an hourly rate. Um, of course, some hygienists you can negotiate and you can say, well, I'm going to pay you on a uh, self-employed percentage basis. So you might pay them 30% or 35% or, or 40%. There are pros and cons to doing this, of course. Uh, in the early stages, if you're starting a hygiene list, this could work quite well well because if they are quite quiet um, and you haven't got that many patients booked in then at least you're not paying a set amount at least you're just paying upon the gross income coming in so they're just getting a percentage of what they earn very much like dentists so this helps you what might end up happening is you pay them slightly more than you would on an hourly rate um, and so obviously that makes them happy but it also keeps you happy because if they're not earning you're not paying but if they are earning then they pay they get paid more than say their hourly rate what I have done in the past, I've said, look, for the first three months, I want you to be paid on a, on a percentage. And this is a percentage. It'll benefit you if you work hard. And obviously, the tendency then is to rebook yourself in, maybe book higher, longer appointments, maybe book the recalls quicker so that you're getting yourself busy and that incentivizes them. Uh, but then after three to six months, when you are more or less fully booked, then we might put you on an hourly rate because that's good for me for cash flow reasons. I know that I'm paying a set amount per, uh, per month. You also, uh, you know, it's good because because you know that you get, you're getting almost like a salary, a guaranteed salary coming in. Um, some hygienists are very happy with that. Some prefer to be just paid a salary from the start and some will just want to stick with the percentage. Depends on their sort of entrepreneurial spirit um, or whether they want to just stay safe and, and get their set salary in because they've got bills to pay that they just want those boxes ticking. Depends very much on their personality. But they're kind of half and half. But generally, uh, the tendency is moving more towards the self-employed hygienist now. 
There's also a tendency on that subject of hygienists who are coming in who are actually qualified dentists from whichever country of origin that they are coming from. Um, and that that also has pros and cons attached to it. Uh, the pros, of course, are that if your main dentist is busy and they the hygienist can work as a dentist and an emergency comes in, or they look at the, the patient with the, the eyes of a dentist but with the hands of a hygienist, then they could flag up certain problems to the dentist or indeed to the patient and hence generate treatment for the dentist, which is always good. Um, the downside of employing a dentist who is a hygienist is that at some stage they will get work as a as a dentist, whether it's NHS or, or whatever. Uh, and the tendency, of course, and understandably, is for them to then leave. And, you know, they might be lovely. They might get on with your patients really, really well. Uh, created, they will have created a rapport with your patients. And then two, three, four months, five months later, they leave. I've had experience of this numerous times um, and it's a real pain. And lastly, of course, there are your employed staff, which are full on proper employed staff, which would be your practice manager, which would be your um, nurses and would be your reception staff. So they are purely uh, employed staff. You pay their taxes um, and they, you know, you owe them the holiday pay and, uh, you know, that, that can be worked out prorated depending on whether they're full time or, or part time. So um, that's really the difference between the, the sort of three levels of staff that you you would employ or take on the services for.